In today's video, we'll be looking at capacitors. We'll look at the symbols and units used, some capacitor theory showing how they're made and how they work, the different types of capacitors and how you calculate capacitance both in series and in parallel, and some applications of capacitors in real life examples. A capacitor is a two terminal electrical component. Along with resistors and inductors, they are one of the most fundamental passive components we use. You'd have to look very hard to find a circuit that didn't have a capacitor in it. What makes capacitors special is their ability to store energy, similar to an electric battery. Capacitors are used in all sorts of applications. They're used in local energy storage, voltage spike suppression and complex signal filtering. Capacitors usually describe their value in microfarads and their rated voltage. There are two main types of capacitor symbols. The first is a non-polarized fixed capacitor. The second is a polarized capacitor. We have different symbols used in the US and in Europe. Polarity is very important when connecting this type of capacitor. And the variable capacitor, which is a capacitor which capacitance can be changed intentionally and repeatedly. The standard unit of capacitance is called the farad, which is abbreviated F. A farad is a lot of capacitance, so even one millifarad is a big capacitor. You'll usually see capacitors rated in the pico, which is 10 to the minus 12, all the way to the microfarad, which is 10 to the minus 6 range. Millifarad, farad and kilofarad capacitors do exist, but are incredibly rare. A capacitor is made by placing two conductive metal plates close together in parallel. Each plate has a termination on one end. In between the metal plates is an insulating material called a dielectric. The dielectric can be made of all sorts of insulating materials such as paper, glass, rubber, ceramic, plastic or basically anything that will stop current from flowing. The plates are usually made from aluminium, tantalum or silver. The number of farads a capacitor has or its capacitance can be calculated using the equation above. Larger capacitors tend to have more capacitance. More surface area provides more capacitance, while more distance between the plates provides less capacitance. The dielectric's relative permittivity will depend on which material you use for the dielectric, and this will have an effect on the capacitance also. In this equation, you can see the capacitance is equal to the dielectric's relative permittivity, which is dependent on the material used, times the area over 4 pi times the distance between the two plates. Electric current, which is the flow of electric charge, flows into a capacitor when the terminations have been connected to a voltage source. These charges get stuck on the plates because they can't get past the insulating dielectric material. More and more negatively charged particles attach themselves to one of the plates. This large number of negative charges on one plate pushes away like charges on the other, making it positively charged. The positive and negative charges on each of the plates attract each other, that is until they have somewhere else to go. When charges group together on a capacitor like this, but due to the dielectric sitting between them, the capacitor is storing electric energy, just like a battery. These charges on the plates create an electric field, and this electric field can influence the electric potential energy and voltage of a circuit. For the following example of how a capacitor works, first we have a capacitor, a light, a battery voltage source, and a switch. So in this first instance, the capacitor is charging, connected to the battery, directly. And then the switch switches to the lamp, and you can see the lamp has been powered by the capacitor. Once the capacitor has completely discharged, the lamp turns off. A capacitor's capacitance, or how many farads it has, can tell you how much charge it can store. How much charge a capacitor is currently storing depends on the potential difference or voltage between its plates. The relationship between the charge, capacitance and voltage can be modelled as the equation Q equals CV, where Q, the charge stored in the capacitor, is the product of its capacitance and the voltage applied to it. This equation also gives us a good way to define the value of one farad. One farad is the capacity to store one unit of energy in coulombs for every one volt. We can take this a step further and find out how capacitance and voltage affect the current, which is the rate of flow of charge. The amount of current through a capacitor depends on both the capacitance and how quickly the voltage is rising or falling. If the voltage rises fast, a large positive current will be induced through the capacitor, while a slower rise will mean less current. If the voltage is steady, then the current is also zero. This is why current can't flow through a capacitor holding a steady voltage. The name of the type of capacitor comes from the material from which the dielectric is made. The most common type of capacitor is a ceramic capacitor. 
These usually have both the smallest capacitance and are the smallest physically sized. They are the least expensive and are well suited to high frequency coupling and decoupling applications. Aluminium and tantalum electrolytic capacitors are useful because you can fit a lot of capacitance into a very small size and they're suitable for high voltage applications. Electrolytic capacitors are usually polarized which means they have a positive and negative pin and are notorious for leakage allowing small amounts of current to run through the dielectric from one termination to the other. If you're looking for high energy storage Supercapacitors are designed to have a very high capacitance. While they can store a huge amount of charge, supercapacitors can't deal with very high voltages. Another common type of capacitor is a film capacitor, which features very low parasitic losses, making it ideal for dealing with high currents. Adding capacitors in parallel is similar to resistors in series. The capacitance is simply the sum of all capacitance together. In this example, we'll use four parallel capacitors, a 10 microfarad, 5 microfarad, 2 microfarad and single microfarad. You simply add them together, giving you 18 microfarads. We sum capacitors in series much like resistors in parallel. The inverse capacitance total is the sum of all the inverse capacitances, which simplifies to so the total capacitance in series is the inverse sum of all the inverse capacitances. Here's an example using a 10 microfarad, a 5 microfarad and a 3 microfarad capacitor. We can sub this into the formula and you can see it gives us a total of 1.579 microfarads. If you only have two capacitors in series, you can use this formula, which is the product over the sum. In this example of 10 and 5 microfarads, we have a total capacitance of 3.333 microfarads. One of the most common uses for capacitors is to be used for decoupling or bypassing. Where an IC is connected to a power supply, a decoupling capacitor is placed close to the integrated circuit. What this does is it suppresses high frequency noise in the power supply signals and takes the tiny voltage ripples which would otherwise be harmful to delicate ICs out of the voltage supply. In the event of the voltage supply dropping, the decoupling capacitor can briefly supply the power at the correct voltage. Decoupling capacitors are connected between the power source and the ground, and it's not uncommon to use two or more different valued, even different types of capacitors to bypass the power supply. In this example, two decoupling capacitors can be seen, and both are used to smooth the signals in and out of the regulator. Diode rectifiers are used to convert AC voltages to DC voltages and are required by many electronics. But diodes alone can't turn an AC signal to a clean DC signal, they need the help of capacitors, and by adding a capacitor to the bridge rectifier, a rectified signal can be turned into a near DC signal. In this example, the decoupling capacitor C1 is critical to the application for charging this phone. By adding a capacitor, an input signal which looks like this, could change to this. You see the end of it being smoothed ever so slightly. Now by increasing the capacitance of that capacitor, it would have this effect on the circuit, where the signal is smoothed even further. And if we continue to rise the value of the capacitor, it almost turns to a near level DC signal. Another common application for capacitors is for signal filtering. There's two common filters, a high pass filter, which allows every frequency over a certain value to pass through the filter. It's made using a resistor and a capacitor. You can specify the design frequency by changing the values of each. Similarly, if you swap the resistor and the capacitor, you create a low pass filter, which allows signals below a specific frequency to pass through. These systems are used a lot in audio devices. And that's it. That's our intro video into capacitors, brought to you by Mishmash Labs. I hope you've enjoyed. Please like and subscribe and share with your friends. Thanks for watching.